Hey friends, it's me, Micah. This is the Homestead Bandwagon. I'm standing outside admiring my Generation 1 Starlink Dishy. Is that what they call it? A Dishy? That was a great marketing idea, calling it something stupid like that, but whatever. This is one that I mounted a couple years ago on a custom iron pipe that everybody said was going to fall over in the first couple weeks. And guess what? Username LOL your mom 69420 it's still standing but that's not what we're talking about today what we're talking about today is progress um, we were a beta tester for Starlink and they sent me an invite to try out their new generation 3 um, router kit we have the generation 1 router it's not the best they said hey you want to try out the new gen 3 router I said I sure do and they said cool they're 200 bucks each yeah, but you can you can buy two and you can mesh them together or three or whatever. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll buy two. So I've got two of them. So here's the two boxes. I haven't even opened them up. They just showed up. Um, what I'm going to do today is install both of them without reading the directions and see if we can create a mesh Wi-Fi system. Now, first question is, why would I buy these from Starlink instead of just buying like a Linksys router, which a lot of people do, just buy a, a Wi-Fi router that's better than the Starlink router and meshing off of that. Isn't it cheaper? Yes, yes it is. Um, is this gonna be better quality? Probably not, I don't know, we'll see. Um, is there any real advantage to buying these instead of buying third-party stuff? I don't see any advantage, <laughs> but I couldn't couldn't resist buying two of these. So I got 400 bucks on my hands here. Um, I'm going to try to mesh from the house to the barn. Let's show you where the barn is. It's a ways away. So like I was saying, um, I've already got a Linksys router that I bought to like get better Wi-Fi coverage because the Gen 1 um, Starlink or Skylink or whatever you want to call it, Starlink um, router didn't have the greatest coverage in our house. And, you know, I wanted to watch my Game of Thrones in 4K in the room that was farthest away from the router. So, yeah, I bought a, another Wi-Fi router and it works fine. But, I don't know, man. That's, I can't resist blowing money, I guess. So, here's the barn. We're at the barn. The house is over yonder. So, it's a couple hundred feet away. And when we're in the barn, we obviously don't have the best... Wi-Fi coverage. Let's uh, I'll grab my phone here and we'll check, see uh, what kind of signal we have out here. Now, right off the bat here, I don't even know if we're gonna be able to mesh out to the barn, but it's a good experiment because earlier today I had Wi-Fi signal. Um, now I have very little, but when I'm standing at the doorway where there's a plug-in, I have some <laughs> Wi-Fi signal. So I've got a little Wi-Fi scanner here that's like Starlink and that's a Starlink. So I've got two Starlink networks for whatever reason. And this needs to be up here to have a good signal right now. Not very good signal. So we want a bubble that's up here. <laughs> um, we'll do a little speed test real quick just to give us a baseline here. This is not very good. Oh, it's getting worse. Long story short, we don't have very good coverage right now. So I'm gonna go hook up the Wi-Fi router on the house and then hook up the other router here, see if we can make a mesh system uh, that works. So we'll cross our fingers here, otherwise I just blew 200 bucks. Okay, let's open this box and see what's going on here. It's a little dusty up here because we don't use the uh, desktop computer too much. I use laptops for all my stuff, but we can deal with a little dust. Ooh, this is fancy looking. What do we got here? Is this the thing? It's got some schmutz on it already. It's supposed to be pure white. This is the driven snow. Okay, what do we got? So I've got, this is where the dish plugs in. This is where the power plugs in. And then it sits like that, I guess? Or does it sit like this? I don't know, because there's an opening here, and this is one of the main reasons I thought it'd be cool to upgrade, is uh, you can open this, 
and there's two uh, plugs here. See the uh, the old the old Starlink. See the old Starlink just has one out, and so that really makes networking hard. Um, I need two, and we were just using a uh, our, we were just using a router to get our two signals going, but. This, this guy over here could shoot out four, so that's why I have to go from there to there, plus it had a bad connection. So anyway, this will allow me to connect to, I guess this is the bottom, this will allow us to, to go out to our desktop, and then downstairs we run Ethernet as well for other stuff. So that's kind of cool. We'll sit on the desk real easy. Um, here's some instructions. I guess you can scan this to tell you how to do it. I'm just going to plug it in, and they give us a little wall wart they give us a this must be the power cord great not super long but we'll deal and then this cable i wonder if this is for like the gen 2 maybe that had a different plug on it i don't know we're just gonna see if that plugs into that it should so i guess we'll just try it First things first, I'm going to plug the power in. Very exciting. That fits in there really nice. Man, it's got like rubber around there. I don't know if it's supposed to dust proof it or waterproof it or what, but it's, I don't know, fancy looking. 200 bucks well spent. Okay, power's plugged in. Things are falling off the shelf. So I guess we'll just go out with the old, unplug the old one, plug in the new one. Oh yeah, that plugs right in. There we go. Now what? There's a light down here. Okay, so we've got our networking plugged in. We've got a light turned on. Rid of old Gen 1. Man, it's nice for cable management, a lot cleaner. This is the old power cord here for the other router, so that can go away. Yeah, that looks pretty clean. So now I'm going to jump on the uh, Starlink app and just see if it lets us connect. I guess we'll just see if I even have internet access right now. No, nothing. Okay. Connect to Starlink Wi-Fi. Hmm, we don't have Starlink Wi-Fi. Oh, it's doing some some thinking light things over here. So we'll give it a, a minute or so to, to think about what it's doing. So right now it just shows that we're well, there's a lot of light and glare, but we're disconnected. Okay, so I uploaded, up, updated the app, and now I've, it's got a couple things for me to do. It says router not configured, so we're going to finish setting up. So I'm going to have to set up some private stuff here, like a network name. Stay tuned. I now have a red light, but I am connected to the Wi-Fi. So I think the Gen 1 cord it came with isn't actually compatible with that unit. So I'm going to use this weird shaped cord that they gave me and see if this connects it. Yep, that's a positive connection. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure I solved the issue. So you got to take out the white cord that was connected to the Gen 1 uh, satellite and use the cord they provided. Who would have thunk if we use the equipment provided by the manufacturer, stuff tends to work. So we're gonna, whew, excuse me, we're gonna let this thing restart and see how we do. Ah, it's calibrating a connection. It says network's performance should stabilize after about 15 minutes. Now one of the big reasons that you get one of these things is for, for better speed. They promised us better speed if you use the new Starlink uh, Gen 3 router. Uh, for reasons, I guess. Um, normally I get about 50 megs, maybe 100 on a really good day. We're paying 120 bucks a month, but it's our only choice for, for internet. So we got to dance with who brung you, right? Um, with the new um, and improved Gen 3 uh, router, I just hit 22 megs. Let's try again. Oh, here we go. Where, where are we going to go? Oh, It's better. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plug in the other router and then I'll go into the settings for this to get mesh going and just see if we can stretch this thing all the way out to the barn. Okay, we're en route to the barn. I'm just seeing if I have any Wi-Fi coverage over here. Um, if we remember, it was, it was uh, scant coverage at best. And I don't really understand how Wi-Fi works, but the Gen 1 had no antennas on it. This Gen 3 has no antennas on it. How's it like making squiggle electric lines go through the air without antennas throwing it? I don't know. But I'll tell you right now, I have uh, <laughs> basically no Wi-Fi at the barn. There's just one little, little bump. I called the network space balls. So if you see that, that's what we're seeing. Um, I'll see if it'll stretch all the way here. Now here's something interesting. So there's a spot in here for you to plug in your, uh, your, uh, your dish connection. We don't have a dish connection on this one. This one's just supposed to collect that Wi-Fi signal and redistribute it under the same Wi-Fi name. That's the idea is continuity no matter where you go in your house. This is obviously a way different idea we're just trying to stretch the Wi-Fi as far as possible, see what the possibilities are. But normally you'd put this in a dead spot in your house where the Wi-Fi is not as good and really spread that Wi-Fi all over under one name. So you're not constantly switching network names, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, there's a spot here and they give you a little plug to plug that so you don't get a bunch of dust and gunk in there. That's actually a really good design. Um, okay, I'm going to just plug it in here. It'd be really nice if this had like a nail spot on it. Okay, so it's plugged in on this, <laughs> on this water pump. This is not going to be a permanent solution, obviously. And I don't even think this thing's waterproof. Um, I'm going to give it a sec to kind of do its thing, I guess. And then I'm going to try to get on the Wi-Fi and, and hit the mesh button and see if we mesh. Okay, I've had to walk away from the barn a little bit just to even, just to even try to connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, and it's a real bad connection. I'm still going to see if it'll reach the other Wi-Fi node or, or mesh thing. Um, I'll just see what happens here. Add mesh. Oops. A new mesh node is trying to join your network. <laughs> it sees the other one. All right, let's pair it and see if we can get any coverage out here at all. We're waiting. Oh, we're going to connect. It's trying really hard. Mesh one connecting. Here we go. I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, it's trying, but if that thing can really pull Wi-Fi from all the way over there, that's pretty impressive, I guess. Um, honestly, the uh, that TP-Link Archer just barely got connection over here, but I, I think we could mesh that thing. But I don't know, man. It's got like big antennas and stuff. This this thing's sleek. It's uh, more of a sports car than a four-wheel drive, I guess. So. 
I am disconnected. Well, that's not good. So I'm going to bring up my Wi-Fi analyzer and just see if it even sees my network. Oh, there's hope yet. Yeah, I, I've got some bumps here. So two different networks for our Wi-Fi. Uh, let's walk over to the barn and see if it's really, really, really um, pulling any speed though. The phone now says I've got full bars. Um, so we're just gonna run a speed test here and see if it's really working. Here's what the survey says. <laughs> About 12 megs a second. Um, see, oh, we're hitting 16. That's not that terrible for out here, really. Hey, friends. It's me, Micah, and huh. this is the Homestead Bandwagon. Yeah, I'm watching some dummy on the Homestead Bandwagon out here in the barn. I guess it works. Okay, well, if, uh, if you're living in a place with, uh, with uh, really limited cell phone connectivity and we want Wi-Fi all over the property, maybe this is a solution. Because, um, of course, you can get Starlink in rural areas like like we live in, um, where connectivity for anything is really awful. So the, we have stretched this Wi-Fi to its limit out here, uh, but the mesh system does seem to work. Um, again, is there a benefit to this Gen 3 Wi-Fi um, over just getting a, a, a good, high-quality, third-party um, Wi-Fi router that you just plug your Starlink router into? I don't know if there really is. I guess there's some... Nice cable management, it looks nice. You know, and we're using all OEM equipment, so that's not bad, but other than that, I'm not seeing a whole lot of benefits here. Um, it stretches, again, okay, but I don't know. If you wanna fiddle around, go for it. Um, I guess it's good enough so I can maybe watch a video in the barn. <sighs> I don't think it beats the current technology on the market. It does have 6G. None of my phones don't use 6G Wi-Fi, so I don't know what that is. Or five, 6 gigahertz, I don't know, gigawatts? I'm not a doctor, but it meshes up really easy. I guess I could say that. I mean, this thing's pretty dummy-proof once you use the right wires. Just plug it in and go and use the Starlink app. So, I don't know, I guess we're going to the moon with Elon Musk once again. All right, y'all, take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll see you later. Well, flash update here. <laughs> I went inside and checked things. Uh, we're up to 150 megs a second. So I guess Starlink is really uh, pushing the speed to us. No, oh, never mind. We're, we're back to 40. <laughs> uh.